Hi y'all, welcome to my shop and welcome to another episode of the Four Ways Collaboration Series starring Richard Reff and Sam Angelo and Thomas Love Tomasek. Um, today we're going to do a hollow form. So I've gotten this piece of, uh, I've got a piece of cherry burl and that's what we're going to use. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, it, it's been cut rough on the bandsaw as, as shown here and then we're going to take the drive center and we're going to just tap it in and go ahead and, and turn a chuck tenon on here so let's add this and the only reason I'm sitting down is it's easier to get a, a close-up with me and everything else in the lathe then I'll stand up to turn alright so we'll get this in back in here get the blades in the right place slide the tailstock up So oh, we've got it mounted between centers. This is a cross grain piece of wood, so the, the standard bowl orientation. I'm going to start off uh, rounding off the outside, then we'll put a tenon on it. And I'm starting off with a 5 8 inch spindle gouge, pretty heavy gouge. Let's get the speed up a little bit. what size chuck I'm going to use and make a tenon here. So I've decided I'm going to use my 75 millimeter bowl jaw so I'm going to get an idea of where I need to mark. Switch to a 3 8 inch bowl gouge to start working on this tenon. Be a nice, uh, nice feature on this this thing. Right. You see how flat this is? I'm just going to use this. I think it's flat enough. Yeah, I think it's flat enough. Okay, let's put it on a chuck. Okay, I like to have some idea where I'm going, so I've sketched out a few various different shapes and give me a feel for what I'm interested in. I'm going to go with this shape right here. This is kind of a pot with a bit of a neck to it. So, let's start shaping the, the top down so I'll know how to hollow it. Meanwhile, we'll bring up some tailstock support. Okay. Let's go back to that uh, 5 8 inch spindle gouge. Yes, 
before I finish shaping the top, the neck, I need to face it off because that's going to affect my design. So let's do that. Let's bring that back. Okay, I'm going to switch to a half inch pull gouge, starting with a little bit of a scrape. is kind of running in this direction until it starts swirling a little bit. some holes as I start uh, hollowing it. That might, that'd, be, that'd be cool. Uh, let me get a little better divot in there or a drill. I'll just come in there with a beating and parting tool. There we go. Okay. Now when I do it in hollow form, I like to drill with a, a fairly deep drill bit, so I'm going to use a half inch or, or one inch that fits uh, in the tailstock. Okay, so I'm going to use one inch drill bit with a Morse taper. Uh, bring this up a little bit so it'll seat. And then just pop it in there. Get the tool rest out of the way. Lock it down. Now I'm measuring this and I want this to be, oh, three and three quarter inches deep. So uh, instead of reading the the, uh, the quill, the etchings, I'm just going to, whoa, I'm just going to use my magic marker and measure off three and a half inches, or about, looks like about 80, 87 millimeter. Now slow the speed down to no more than about 500. Just slowly, I'm going to keep my fingers here, I'm going to keep them away from a sharp flute, but if it, if it starts spinning, uh, I want to be able to back it out. Okay, it's, I need a little more torque, so let me change the belt. Yeah, I should have checked the pulley setting before I started. I had it set on a high speed uh, 60 to 3600, so I definitely needed a little more torque than that in the highest speed setting. Okay, let's 
Turn it on again. chips a little earlier. <laughs> because this is green wood and it's beginning to expand, but fortunately I caught it in time. Okay. I'm going to start off opening up this hole with this uh, square scraper and I got a magnet to measure the depth. Negative rake, lift the handle up, cut at or slightly below center. Or actually, yeah, we'll get the speed up to, oh, not a lot more than a thousand, I don't think. Just a little bit at a time. shaving so let me uh, blow some of these out. First time I've used my new compressor for a hollow form. Well, there wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a lot of shavings in there. Okay. Right. Let's get a little too deep I think I'm going to clean up around this shoulder. For anyone new to doing a hollow form I've just got just a couple of quick suggestions. Number one, hollow forms come in different sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. As a result your tools tend to need to be sized for small, medium, large, and extra large. Uh, a 
medium to large to me would be a cremation urn. I don't do anything bigger than that, so I don't do extra large. Uh, I would say when you're starting off, start off with something very small you, and have a large opening so you've got a feel for what you're doing. Don't, don't get into advanced techniques before you get the basics down. You can do an awful lot with, with scrapers. To get up under the shoulder, I'm just going to use this uh, hooked nose scraper because I can pretty much get where I want to go with this large opening. A lot of this is just by feel because you can't see what's inside. I'm going to rotate it up a little bit. As a result, I've softened this edge here so it won't chew up the tool rest too badly. Be very careful pulling your tool out. need to go a little deeper. I don't want to get any thinner. And I want to uh, get a little bit of a slope bevel down inside there, so let me see if I can do that. I'm getting in the camera's way. Maybe by doing it left-handed, if I can do that. Okay. Nothing sandpaper can't, can't fix. Okay. I'm going to sand the inside of the mouth with a little bit of uh, foam with sandpaper wrapped around it just to, to, get, to get in there a little bit. And that's done a, done a pretty nice job. And I need to get in here into the throat a little bit, so I'll do the same thing. I'll wrap it tight like that. Now we're going to reverse this and finish shaping it and, and turn off the bottom. So first thing we're going to do is, of course, take it out of the chuck. Okay, we're going to use a collet, collet chuck uh, with a three-quarter inch collet. And I'm going to show you what we're going to hold with that in just a moment. did a review of this collet chuck some years back. I'll have a link up above. This is just a really handy tool for holding anything smaller that's round. And I love with this smaller lathe that I can use the same collet chuck without doing any adapter or anything since it's got the same one and quarter inch threads. Alright now here's the here's the tool we're going to wind up using and I'll go into a little more detail here in just a moment. So we're going to hold that snugly. This won't damage the threads or anything. Before I mount this, I'm going to use a chair, cushion chair, uh, chair pad to put on the very, very bottom. Give me a little bit of cushioning effect on the inside. All right, now, slide this back a little bit. We just slide this on. I've already adjusted the nut, I've already adjusted the cone. Now I've got to readjust it because of that pad at the bottom. So with the pressure against, against the bottom, using the same hole that we did between centers, that centers it, bring up a little pressure. Now all I do is turn this cone and the nut against the cone until I just feel a little bit of resistance. It doesn't have to be much. Make sure it doesn't, doesn't move around too much. Just another 
tiny little. And then I bring up another locking nut. If this was threaded, it'd be different. Okay. So now you can see by turning this, it's not slipping or sliding. Bring up a little more pressure. Now I'm going to finish shaping it and removing the uh, the, the bottom. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. Just bring this bottom. This is going to be the actual bottom right here. Uh, right here, and I'm going to eliminate that. So let's turn this on. Bring up the speed. Light cut. Slipping a little bit. So put a little more pressure. I want to tuck this bottom in. Alright, let me check the figure on this. It's going every which way. I'll get a better cut coming in from this side, so let's let's do that. So we're just gonna it over a little bit. Well, I think I was getting a better cut from this direction. Slow the feed rate down. profile and I think I want to turn it a little bit smaller and I've got a little bit of ridge there at the end. Try to smooth out before I sand. Okay, that's good. That's ready for sanding. I'm mostly going to sand with with the grain to deal with some of the troublesome areas before I think about power sanding. Now for the hardest part is taking taking off the, uh, the tenon. So we're going to turn the speed up a little bit. Not too fast, 1200. We're just going to come in with a spindle gouge right into it. Again, the pressure is being transferred to the inside, not to the, the neck. I've got some tool marks there that uh, must be some soft areas I'm having a challenge with, so I think I'm going to come back and use my shear scraper to try to smooth that out a little bit. Just like that, we'll get rid of some tool marks. find that shape just about the way I want. I've got a little bit of a bump right here. So need to deal with that. Hands are 
smoother than your your eyes. Okay, yeah, that looks good. I'll re re-sand -san that uh, and then come back to this. Now back to finishing the foot. concave it now we go back to finishing this off I want to kind of test for flatness I can see I got a little bit of bulge in the middle I got to take care of we're going back to the spindle gas this is snug Get the speed up a little bit Come to the tool. Test for flatness again. And that looks good. We're going to come down just a little bit more, and then we'll cut it off with a flush cut saw. As close as I want to get with this technique, back this off. Ooh. I think I can still hold it. Oh, I saw it. Okay. Now, we're going to just sand that with a mandrel on the lathe to kind of smooth out that bottom. So on my collar chuck, I swap out the uh, three-quarter for a quarter inch. Put on the mandrel. Put on my 120 grit, and now we're just going to sand off the bottom. And that 120 is almost good enough, but I'm going to put on, go down a little bit finer, get that corner a little bit, and the rest of it will do by hand sanding. Happy with it.